and went out to dinner with my girlfriend at the time, Laura. And she ordered the bronzino fish, which was the special of the evening. But when our waitress brought the fish, Laura didn't smile. Instead, her eyes widened and her jaw dropped, because what the waitress placed in front of her was not this fillet that you see on the screen, but instead a fish that looked like this, one that had its skin salon, its eyes, its head, and its mouth. At first, Laura's reaction was so strong that she didn't even want to eat her meal. Why was this the case? It was because what was served to her was a reminder that she was eating an actual animal. Now, in theory, this is obvious. Duh, a fish, is a, or a fish is something that swam around in the ocean before we caught it so that we could eventually eat it. But in practice, we humans, myself included, for I am absolutely no exception, have developed an incredible ability to ignore certain obvious truths and to happily go about our day as hypocrites full of contradiction. My name is Max Raphael. I am a recently converted pescatarian. And today, I'm going to talk to you about debatably the most unethical practice of our time, the one that is riddled with hypocrisy and contradiction, and that is the animal agriculture industry. Animal agriculture, but specifically factory farming, is a problem because it contributes to climate change, is damaging to our health, and is extremely unethical to animals. In this speech, I'm going to first discuss with you why this is such an issue. And then I will explain why we must come together to federally ban what is known as ag-gag legislation. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Animal rights? Is that something that we really should be caring so much about? And I understand, I used to think this way myself until I realized yet another contradiction within my own life. Instead of thinking about animals, I want you to think about your dog. And if you don't have a dog, maybe someone else's that you're close with. Now imagine that this dog is kept in a cage from the moment that she's born until the moment that she dies. And thousands of other dogs are stacked just like that, on top of her, below her, to the left of her, and to the right of her. They're locked in a building with minimal light, only a little stream coming in from a tiny window. Inside, they sit in their own poop, they're barely fed, they're covered in blisters, they're crying and are emotionally distraught, and many have even died and are just lying there, rotting. But the caretakers don't care. In fact, they've even manipulated the lighting of the shed to trick your dog that when she's pregnant, the days are actually going by faster, so in turn she can have her children quicker, who will of course be separated from her the moment they're born and they'll never see each other again. Are you still sure that animals don't deserve rights? But maybe they're cage-free, though, right? Or free-range? I'm afraid, too, that this is more BS. According to USDA policy, free-range just necessitates access to the outdoors. This means that, in practice, a coup of tens or even hundreds of thousands of chickens can just have one screened window that, through which light can come in. And they can maybe see the light if they're lucky enough to have their cage facing the right direction. But maybe they're cage-free. Well, cage-free only means that there aren't actual physical metal cages. You could stick as many chickens as you could fit in the cupboard underneath your sink, and that would technically still be cage-free. And in fact, that is actually what's happening, except with a much bigger cupboard and way, way more chickens. Finally, some of these animals are even smarter than dogs. According to a 2009 New York Times article, pigs are actually far more intelligent than these dogs that we covet so much. So there you have it. Our willingness to eat factory farmed meat is our willingness to support the absolute and utter torture of billions of animals every single day. The shame that you probably feel right about here in your stomach at this moment should tell you something. There is something deeply wrong about what is happening here. But the problem does not just stop on, an, on the level of animal cruelty. Animal agriculture is also highly problematic because it poses risk to us, to humans, both on an individual and on a societal level. Scientists at the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in 2007 reported that globally, animal agriculture contributes to climate change approximately as much as all transportation industries combined, 
making it one of the leading contributors to global warming. And on an individual level, factory farming practices pose significant health risks. These industrial plants use copious amounts of hormones, of antibiotics, and pesticides, which according to a 2011 Huffington Post article, increase dramatically the risk of heart disease and cancer, as well as numerous foodborne illnesses, such as the notable 20, uh, 2009 H1N1 virus, according to the 2009 Environment Health Study. So what do we do about this? This is clearly a major problem, and it seems like nobody knows about it. This is not by accident. Across the country, corporations are attempting, and many have succeeded, in lobbying for legislation known as ag-gag laws, a term coined by Mark Bittman in a 2011 New York Times column. These laws forbid people from filming or photographing anything that goes on within one of these factory farm facilities without the explicit consent of the owner. Now, I stand before you today to propose that we federally ban ag-gag legislation. In practice, this would mean that states are unable to pass legislation that prevents individuals from seeking to expose the practices of these farms, even when doing so will have a negative impact on the profitability of these companies. In an area that is so shrouded by mystery, this law will give the public a legitimate avenue and maybe even the only avenue to understanding how the food that they're eating is made and what they're contributing to when they purchase meat. And as citizens, we have the right to understand what our actions do contribute to, specifically when these things are extreme cruelty and torture, as well as danger to our health and to our planet. Creating a unified and informed public is the first and necessary step in the process of reforming our industrial farming practices. But it's important to remember that this problem is so vast, <coughs> so murky, and so corrupt that no one single solution can solve it at a given time. However, as evidence and analogy both show, the elimination of ag-gag legislation will provide a pivotal step towards reforming our animal agriculture process. The, pro the problem of animal agriculture is actually strikingly similar to child labor in the United States. In the late 1800s, child labor was prevalent across many different industries, but many people did not know about the details of these labor practices. But in 1904, the National Child Labor Committee was formed. And unsurprisingly, its first step was to publish information on the lives and working conditions of these youth. This step exposed the contradiction between the moral values of the public and the practices of these businesses, and was the catalyst for creating all of the ensuing child labor legisla legislation uh, that has since been enacted. Similarly, a 2012 study by the ASPCA has shown that 94% of Americans support the belief that, and I quote, from every step of their lives on a farm, from birth all the way until slaughter, sorry, that was not right, farm animals should be treated in a way that inflicts the least amount of pain and suffering possible. By analogy, ag-gag laws will pave the way for the public to recognize these atrocious contradictions that so many of us do engage in catalyzing further reform for our practices. A clear example of this comes from the 2013 Mercy for Animals investigation. This investigation, which would be illegal under ag-gag laws, exposed the cruel practices of Sparbo, one of the United States' largest suppliers of eggs. Following public pressure, McDonald's, Target, and many other big businesses within the United States dropped Sparbo as a supplier. By allowing individuals to continue to simply show the public what is happening in the businesses that make our food, something that we do have the right to know. Analogous issues such as child labor, as well as examples within this own industry, prove that this can begin the process of animal agriculture reform. We are fortunate to live in a country as prosperous as the United States. In fact, today, we are so prosperous that we have to spend less of our income on food than any other nation in the history of the world. And we should be ashamed that this country, with such prosperity and such professed commitment to morality, in the name of affordability, treats its animals with cruelty so extreme that they would be illegal if done on a dog. As American citizens, we have the right and with it the responsibility to speak out when our values are violated. And we must not allow value to become more important than values. 
we must take action against farming. And as our first step, we must demand from our lawmakers that they federally ban ag-gag legislation. Thank you.